Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the webinar organized by 2WCOM Systems in Flensburg, Germany. My name is Barry Eskes, and I will be your host for today's webinar. This webinar has been prepared by Anke Schneider, Jo Schulke, and Barry Eskes. My colleague Jo Schulke will be available to answer your in-depth technical questions at the end of this webinar. We will have plenty of time to answer all your questions. Today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of MPX transport over IP and how to take away the cons. The webinar will take about 25 minutes. During the presentation, you can ask your questions in the chat functions. We will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. It might be a good idea to mark the number of the slides you request, your question refers to. Of course, you can also contact us after the webinar by video, phone, or email. What are we going to talk about today? We will start with a brief introduction on 2WCOM systems. Then we will we let you enjoy a brief flashback in time. We're going to ask ourselves, why should we use MPX over IP transport? We show the pros and cons of MPX over IP transport and conclude today's webinar. And of course, answer all your questions. So who is 2WCOM Systems? 2WCOM is a technology-driven company in Flensburg, Germany, which lies up in the north of Germany near the Danish border. We are developing and delivering audio products and solutions for over 20 years. We can, of course, start bragging about our references and successful projects. Most important for us is the interaction between you, our customers, and our team of engineers. This helps us to develop new products and technologies which are needed in the market space. So let's continue the webinar and enjoy a flashback in time. <clears throat> For the newbies in MPX, let's take a closer look at the MPX signal. The left side shows the frequency range 20 Hz to 15 kHz, which is reserved for mono audio. A bit to the right, you will notice the stereo pilot, which is modulated as a 90 kHz carrier. Between 23 and 53 kHz, the left minus right audio component is placed. On the moment your radio detects a stereo pilot of 90 kHz, it will immediately process the mono signal from 20 Hz to 15 kHz and demultiplex it with the left minus right audio component. Your car radio will then switch to stereo mode and you will enjoy the unsurpassed audio quality of FM. At the right side, the RDS carrier on 57 kHz is provided. This allows your radio to display station name, activate traffic announcement, and most important, switch your radio tuner to other FM transmission towers without you noticing it. It also carries TMC, which is data for your navigation system. As you will understand, MPX is a very complex signal form. Even the slightest disturbance has a huge effect on the transmitter. So we have to be very careful when transporting MPX over IP. You do not have to be worried about this because 2WCOM has over 20 years of experience in audio. So you're in good hands. When did we start with MPX over IP? In 2012, 2WCOM Systems has introduced the first MPX over E1 transport. E1 was used by virtual all broadcasters using microwave links to connect their studio to the transmitters. E1 offers two megabit lines and is a synchronous distribution method, perfect for MPX transport. E1 systems, however, got obsolete and is getting replaced by IP. In 2014, we introduced the first MPX over IP systems with analog MPX input and MPX output. By using a smart compression technology designed by 2WCOM, the bandwidth could be reduced from 3.5 megabits to 1.7 megabits per second. In 2014, that was a major breakthrough. In 2017, this product was upgraded and it became digital MPEG inputs and outputs. 
In this year, 2020, we are proudly introducing a completely new designed modular MPX over IP, offering an MPX codec, a micro MPX codec, a stereo generator, an RDS encoder, dual IP stream technology, and secure IP transport in only one rack unit. This slide shows a brief overview of bandwidth usage when transporting MPX over IP. Uncompressed MPX offers linear transport at 3.5 megabits and is, from a technology perspective, the best method. Since bandwidth limitations are a hot topic, 2WCOM developed their own MPX compression technology. MPX was compressed to 1.7 megabits, allowing the audio quality to remain virtually untouched. Micro MPX is the latest compression method developed by StereoTool, a member of the TELUS Alliance. They, called, they developed a compression method for MPX and called it Micro MPX. Micro, micro MPX compression allows transport of MPX over just 320 kilobits per second. Transporting MPX over this extreme low bandwidth is very impressive. Even the lowest bitrate of 320 kilobits brings a very satisfactory audio quality. How this is achieved will be explained later in this webinar. Why should we use MPX over IP? Aside from the technical part, let's take a closer look at the operational aspects. It allows the broadcasters to do audio processing on the central location. It avoids time-consuming trips to reconfigure audio processors at the transmitter site. It reduces the number of equipment. So, how do we do this? Let's first make a sidestep to audio over IP and take a look at the upper block diagram. The most common method of transport is audio over IP. Audio over IP is effective and, due to the low bandwidth usage, a cost-effective way of feeding audio to the transmitters. Audio over IP requires at the transmitter side an audio over IP codec, a stereo generator, an RDS encoder, and in many cases, a fairly expensive sound processor. How about MPX over IP? Now let's take a look at the lower block diagram. You will notice the difference in equipment at the transmitter side. MPX over IP requires only one unit at the transmitter site because sound processing is done at the studio. So what benefit brings that to the radio station? This is a typical setup for a radio station operating eight transmitter sites. The radio program and RDS data are distributed as audio over IP to the eight transmission transmitter sites. Each site has an audio over IP codec, an RDS encoder, and, if I may add, a fairly expensive sound processor with integrated stereo generator. Each change in sound processing has to be performed at every single transmitter site. So, how does that compare to MPX over IP? Distributing MPX over IP looks amazingly simple. The sound processing and RDS encoding are performed at the studio. At each transmitter site, only one MPX over IP codec has to be installed, as this unit carries the MPX, which is already pre-processed at the studio. So let's take a closer look at the advantages of MPX over IP. Operating an MPX over IP system offers following benefits. Sound processing at the studio, easy and fast change in sound processing, for example, music or speech. Your radio station can now add a specific loudness to each radio program and advertisement. You can dynamically reconfiguration from the sound processor will increase customer satisfaction. This will bring more listeners to your radio program and subsequently attracts more advertisers to your radio station. This increase in dynamic sound processing brings added value to the advertiser, which means potential extra revenue for the radio station. All transmitters all over the network will have the same sound processing, even at the most remote sites. 
So what about capital expenses? CAPEX shows how much investment is required to purchase the equipment. Because of 2WCOM's modular and compact design, 2WCOM's MPX over IP solution requires only one unit at the transmitter site. And how about the operational expenses, the OPEX? Because of the reduced number of units, obviously less rack space and energy costs per transmitter sites are required. Less units means also less rack space rental and maintenance cost. Please contact your service provider to calculate the exact saving in operational expenses. As we all care about our children's future, our footprint is also an important part of our decision making. How we can contribute to the environment? That's the question. Well, by reducing the number of equipment, we will also reduce the energy consumption and therefore contribute to the environment. So that's all a lot of benefits. So the next question is, are there any disadvantages to MPX over IP? Yes, there are disadvantages. Bandwidth usage, audio synchronization and transmission robustness. So let's take a closer look at them point by point. Bandwidth is very important to the broadcaster as this has direct impact to the operational cost. As mentioned earlier this webinar, uncompressed MPX distribution and even 2WCOM's compression does not satisfy the radio station with limited bandwidth. We are facing bandwidths typically between 1.7 and 3.5 megabits per second. But micro MPX does offer an extreme low bandwidth and good audio quality. How is micro MPX different than other MPX over IP solutions? Think of regular MPX like a CD or a linear WAV file and micro MPX like an MP3 or other compressed format. Now, what is micro MPX? Micro MPX was specially designed to compress MPX in a way that it can be transported over a very small bandwidth. At 320 kilobits, blind listening tests have shown that it's extremely difficult to hear the difference in audio quality between micro MPX and non-compressed MPX. So how does micro MPX offer this high quality at this low bit rate? Low bit rate? Unfortunately, the compression method of micro MPX is a well hidden secret from stereo tool. Just to give you an impression on how we believe it works, the micro MPX encoder compresses stereo audio, RDS data and pilot carrier to micro MPX format. We believe that the audio component, which takes the, load, the most of the bandwidth, is compressed in the same way as MP3. So how is micro MPX turned back to a standard MPX output? We believe decompression works as follows. The micro MPX decoder receives via IP the following components. Stereo audio, RDS data, the pilot carrier, with information on the face of the 19 kilohertz carrier. Specifically, the 19 kilohertz pilot carrier is important because once recreated, it becomes the cornerstone for the decompressed MPX. The 90 kilohertz carrier is necessary to lock audio and the 57 kilohertz RDS carrier to the correct phase. Furthermore, the decoder restores audio processing as explained in the previous slide. This is the only way to recreate, sorry, this is the only way to recreate an MPX output, which is exactly the same at all micro MPX decoders. Once the micro MPX decoder has restored the original MPX, it can be connected to the transmitter. Now we have explained how micro MPX works. Let's get to the next topic, audio synchronization. Audio synchronization is essential for both audio IP over IP and MPX over IP. Let me explain. When car drivers travel, they do not want to be bothered with audio problems when driving through the area. We call the audio delay between two or more FM transmitters delta delay. To overcome this situation, 
to WCOM offers three different methods to avoid synchronization problems. We have NTP or Network Time Protocol. Each MPX over IP decoder is synchronized by NTP. An active internet connection at the transmitter site is mandatory. NTP brings a delta delay below 10 milliseconds. This means that switching between two transmitters, transmitter towers does not result in hearable audio differences. The second method is P2P version 2 or precision time protocol version 2 in accordance to RFC 8173. This is an advanced synchronization method offering less than one millisecond delta delay. The MPX over IP encoder generates a timing signal, which must be carried through the IP network to all IP, MPX over IP decoders. The IP switches and routers in the IP network have to be P2P version two compliant. The third method, GPS or one PPS. This offers microsecond accuracy and allows the radio station to operate the network in the, high, the highly sophisticated single frequency network mode, or SFN. This requires a GPS clock generator on each transmitter station. For real single frequency network operation, also the transmitter has to be synchronized by a GPS clock. Now, this may be one of the most important parts when transporting MPX over IP. As mentioned before, any disturbance in transmission of IP can have a huge effect on the FM deviation at the transmitter site. This will also have a negative effect on the audio quality. To overcome this potential risk, 2WCOM offers following solutions. There are two major challenges. Jitter and connection protection. That's number one. This can be solved by dual streaming via two separate IP feeds and intelligent buffer management at the decoder. If the primary stream is interrupted, the decoder switches automatically to the second IP stream. Lost packet protection, number two. This can be solved by intelligent error correction, such as pro mpeg fac or Secure Reliable Transport, or SRT. A proven mechanism is the pro mpeg error protection. The error protection is based on the fact that send packets are organized in a matrix structure at the encoder in order to calculate correction packets over the rows and columns. A fairly new but very robust way of protection is called SRT, Secure Reliable Transport. SRT requires, however, a bi-directional IP connection. So let's take a closer look at dual streaming in combination with Pro and PACFAC. This will be done by Jo Schulke, and now I have to switch to a video. One second, please. Hi, my name is Joost, and I'm an engineer with 2WCOM Systems. Today I would like to demonstrate how protecting your audio over IP data streams using either dual streaming or FEC can help you deal with contribution problems that are caused by packet loss on IP lines. Let us take a short look at both methods and how they work in detail. Dual streaming is a method where an exact copy of the main contribution stream is sent along to the destination, typically using a different network. If there are any problems on one transmission network, like failing equipment, congestion, rerouting, packet loss or others, there is still the copy taking the other path. At the decoder, both streams are analyzed. Let's see what happens if there has been packet loss on both lines. In this example, you can see that the stream over network 1 lost two packets, number 3 and 10, and the stream over network 2 lost four packets, number 2, 5, 7 and 9. In the decoder, both streams are recombined, and since not the same packet is missing from both streams, the original stream can be fully restored and decoded. It is also possible to use dual streaming on a single transmission network, but in that case it's recommended to delay one stream by a fixed amount of time to cope with burst error losses that would affect both streams at the same time. In this example, the transmission network caused both streams to lose a burst of packets. Since Stream 2 is sent time delayed from Stream 1, 
Not the same packets are lost on both streams and it's possible to recombine the original stream without any gaps. Forward error correction, or just FEC in short, is a method where the contribution stream is arranged into a two-dimensional matrix. Error protection packets are calculated over rows and columns of the matrix and can later be used by the decoder to close a gap of exactly one packet per row or column. Error correction packets are sent alongside the main contribution stream to the destination. I have prepared the following example to demonstrate how the FEC works. I have chosen the following example to demonstrate the worst case a 4x4 FEC can recover from. In this example, five main contribution packets have been lost, and also three FEC packets have been lost. However, it's possible to fully recover from all the error losses on the main contribution. Once enough packets have been received by the decoder to start the reconstruction process, it will start to recover the main contribution packets step by step. Ok, let's look at a live example. On the top we'll see a decoder that is running a single stream and on the bottom one with dual streaming. I've chosen the waterfall diagram to display the audio because any problems in the audio will be clearly visible in the spectral view. I will now add 5% packet loss to the main contribution. As is clearly visible in the top waterfall diagram, any missing IP packet will cause the audio output to glitch or even have a gap. Since there is no packet loss on the second stream, the decoder on the bottom has no problems replacing any missing packets from the second stream and thus there is no glitching in the audio output. I will now enable 10% packet loss for the second stream, so the second decoder is receiving 5% loss on the first stream, 10% on the second stream. Let's see how long it takes before we get one packet that is missing out of both streams. And there it was. Considering that we are at 15% packet loss, the decoder on the bottom is still able to recover most of the packets and is running a lot smoother than the one on the top. In the second demonstration, we will take a look at the FEC. On the top, we have a decoder that is running on a single network, single stream, no FEC. On the bottom, the same, except that one is using in the 4x4 FEC. I will now introduce 1% packet loss to the same stream that both decoders are using and we'll see that decoder 1 is having issues with missing packets whereas the other one is able to use the FEC packets to repair it. Let's increase this to 5% packet loss. And you can see a lot more glitches on the top decoder, whereas the bottom decoder is still able to maintain a stable output. However, it's possible that uh, depending on which packets are uh, lost, that uh, even the second decoders have, will have problems. Okay, let's increase it to 10%. And then I'll expect to see some issues on Decoder 2 as well. There we go. In this last demonstration, I will enable all the tools that we have at our disposal. Decoder 2 will use FEC 4x4, it will use dual streaming, and also the second stream is delayed by 25 milliseconds. I will first enable 25% packet loss on the first stream which will then send decoder 1 into an almost inoperational state. You see the audio output is basically not usable at all. I'll now enable 25% pack loss on the second stream. And as you can see, decoder 2 is still able to recover all the packets and has a stable output, even though we are at almost theoretically 50% packet loss. 
So this concludes our little demonstration. Let's go to our conclusion. Whether you're having issues with your contribution network right now, or you want to avoid them in the future, there's dual streaming, FEC, or a combination of both available at your disposal. If you're uncertain which method is the right one for you, you can always contact us and we'll help you choose the right one. I'd like to thank you for your time and hope I was able to assist you in your current or future endeavors. Goodbye. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very clear. Um, probably there are many questions on this topic, uh, which we can answer at the end of this presentation. We're almost there, so please stay with us. The conclusion, because that was a lot of information to digest. So we're now coming to the conclusion of the webinar. So let's recall the pros and cons of MPX over IP. The pros are very clear. The radio station can make more use of the capabilities of the IP transportation network. Especially the dynamics processing at the studio site allows the radio station to generate more revenue from the advertisers while at the same time offering a more dynamic sound to the listeners. Also, the capital investment and operational costs the new MPX over IP technology brings much benefit. By implementing state-of-the-art error protection for MPX over IP, the transport, and activating the latest micro MPX compression MPX technology, we are able to take away the cons and upgrade your MPX distribution network to an impressive level. The solution 2WCOM system offers is called MPX 1G. This state-of-the-art technology offers MPX codec, RDS generator, stereo generator, advanced trans transmission robustness, and the latest micro MPX compression technology in only one 19 inch rack unit. So let's take a look up on MPX 1G and how it looks from the inside. Here you will see, one moment please. Here you will see a block diagram of the micro MPX encoder, micro MPX encoder, MPX 1G. On the left side here is the input. You can connect either analog or digital MPX, and also for uh, single frequency networking, a GPS, one PPS timestamping. The MPX is digitized and can be encoded in either the standard MPX 3.5 megabits or the uh, 2WCOM. MPX compression methods 1.7 megabits or the micro MPX, which offers 320 or if you want to increase your audio quality up to 567 kilohertz, kilobits per second. This now is combined into an IP stream and the dual streaming and pro MPEG, as just explained by Yoast, is putting uh, extra robustness to the system. And there are two IP outputs separate, so you can use dual streaming and connect it to either an IP network or jump it over the satellite, both is possible. Now let's go to the decoder. It looks more or less the same, but then the opposite way. It has two IP inputs, which can be connected to the encoder. We can also add satellite tuners if you want to put a micro MPX over satellite distribution. It is from satellite decoded or from IP. The dual streaming and pro MPEG is doing their work to improve the robustness of the signal. The MPX is decoded and we can add also synchronization, one PPS for GPS for single frequency networking. And then it is brought out from the system to a digital MPX output or analog MPX. There's also an RDS encoder integrated. If required, we can also Connect, you can also connect an external RDS UCP signal. So if you want to do regionalized UCP, that's also a possibility from the MPX 1G micro MPX decoder. So that's a very brief and very fast overview. And of course, we are happy to further discuss this in detail in a one on one discussion with you. Okay, thank you very much. On behalf of my colleagues Joost, Anke, and the 2WCOM team, we would like to thank you for your attention. After the webinar, we will send you a copy of the presentation and the information about 2WCOM's MPX over IP products. Please do not hesitate to contact us in case you'd like to have more information 
or a live demonstration on this amazing piece of technology. On behalf of the company 2 thank you very much for your attention and have a very good day. Thank you.